Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. This video is part of my information series, and today we're going to be talking about how I capture gameplay. So being a YouTuber, I have a lot of challenges of trying to find ways to record my videos and just show you demonstrate gameplay so that you can see what I'm talking about. Now, over the years, I've slowly evolved how I capture my video. I started off in a very cheap method because honestly, guys, I'm not monetized. So I don't have a lot of money to be able to put into the channel and stuff. Uh, I just, it's just the facts, the way things are. Uh, so I started off fairly cheap. I, I kind of experimented around just to see uh, which directions I wanted to head. And I found a couple of deals for fairly cheap. And then I kept on moving on and on and on. And then I would trade away some old, old equipment to get some new equipment. And, uh, I finally ended up with the setup that I have now that I'm very happy with. But this is just kind of like a little bit of a hardware journey so that you guys that are starting out can have a little bit more information. So the first thing I started off with was the EasyCap 280M. Now this device is can be used to record gameplay from a video game console. Uh, it can also record a microphone input as well. So if you wanted to mix that in, you can possibly do that. Uh, it connects to your computer directly via USB and comes with software that allows you to change some of the settings and record video and audio. It is definitely a cheaper alternative to other HDMI recorders on the market. I think I paid maybe 25 bucks for this thing. Uh, it does not have as many features as the more expensive recorders, but it is a good basic option for someone who's wanting to start to record gameplay footage. Uh, however, I did find that the that this device lacked uh, the quality that I was looking for, so I had to move on to find something that was better, that suited my needs. So that's when I moved on to the Blackmagic Intensity Pro Shuttle USB 3.0. And yes, yes, I know. That is a mouthful. It is a ridiculously long name. So I think I'm just going to call it the Pro Shuttle from now on. <clears throat> the Pro Shuttle is a USB 3.0 video capture device that allows you to capture and edit video from a wide variety of sources and it supports a wide range of video formats. Uh, this, it allows to do all the basic things. You can capture video in high quality, but it also does it in an uncompressed format, which is pretty impressive. Uh, I think I picked this thing up at a pawn shop for like 50 bucks. Uh, they retail for a little bit more than that. I think they retail for a hundred now. Uh, so it features a professional grade HDMI input and output. That was one of the few things that I really enjoyed. Um, the EasyCap 280M, the HDMI output was not very good. So I had to use an HDMI splitter to get that to work. But back to the Pro Shuttle. So you can also have a component video input as well as S video and composite. Now, that's really interesting because there's not a lot of devices that will take raw analog inputs like that um, or just do it without having to mess with adapters that are, you know, very on, on a very small connector that has, you know, the susceptibility of being able to break really quickly because the, it's just a very small port and there's a lot of mechanical pressure on it. But we'll get back to the, the uh, shuttle. So it is definitely compatible with Windows and Mac. Uh, it can be used with a wide range of video editing software. It's a fair option for professional video editors and content creators who need to capture and edit high quality video footage. However, I found the device to be very picky about the input video formats and the support for the device was very lackluster. Um, you reach out to the 
uh, black magic people, and they really don't want to support this device anymore, I don't think. Um, one of my personal things that I ran into was the fact that the Super Nintendo could output S-Video, but the, the shuttle did not want to accept that video signal for some reason. Um, that's the other part, is the Pro Shuttle, even though it has all of these nice features, it really only likes accepting standard video formats from, like, cameras and stuff. Uh, it is not truly built for video game consoles. So, while it has a lot of really good features, I could not in good conscience suggest purchasing this device. If someone gives you one for free, then yeah, you can kind of like hammer at it a little bit and find some workarounds to capture video so that you can have what you need. But again, I moved on to another device. The next device is the Avermedia C027 PCI E HD. Now, again, a very long name. I'll just call it the Avermedia. Uh, well, no, I can't call it that. Uh, I will call it the C027. Now, a lot of people would be scared of using this device because you have to open up your computer and install a, a uh, PCIe card onto the motherboard. A lot of people are not comfortable with doing this. I'm quite fine with it just because I work with computers. I've worked with computers all of my life. And this does not intimidate me in any way, shape, or form. It's really not that bad. But uh, if you really just don't feel comfortable doing it, then, you know, don't buy this card. So the C027 is a video capture card that can be installed in a computer's PCI Express slot. It uses uh, it is used to capture and record video and audio from various sources such as video cameras, gaming consoles, and set-top boxes. It uses high definition. It supports high definition video resolutions. It has a built-in hardware encoder, which is great because it helps reduce the load on the CPU for the computer during video capture and recording. It also has a built-in time shift function, which allows you to manipulate live television if you're if you've hooked your cable up to it. This capture card comes with Avermedia's REC Central software, which allows you to adjust settings, schedule recordings, and stream live video to the uh, to the internet. It's compatible with Windows, Mac uh, operating systems, and can be used with a wide range of video editing software. It's a good option for people who want to record a high quality video footage and also stream live video to the internet. It's pretty budget friendly option for those who want to record videos from their gaming consoles or set top boxes. And, you know, I, I kind of like it for that feature. It's was not very expensive. I can't remember off the top of my head, but compared to other devices, this is actually one of the cheaper Aver medias out there. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is one of the video cameras that I actually have to use to record my handheld devices. And I know that using a camera, pointing it at, at a uh, handheld is not the optimal thing. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. So I use the Logitech C920. I'm a big Logitech fan. The Logitech C920 is a web camera that can be connected to the USB via, you know, and feed video and audio for online communication, such as conference, video, live streaming, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's a webcam, guys. You get it. Uh, it's, compa it's compatible with most video conferencing software, and it also works great with OBS. Now, what I usually do is I will focus lock it, and then I will uh, brightness lock it as well so that none of the auto features, no auto focus, no auto brightness adjustments, nothing. And once I lock it in, that's it. And then I have to keep the, the handheld on like a little stand and everything, and it works out pretty well. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is kind of an odd device. It's actually a VHS DVD combo. 
And it's the Sony VHS DVD RDR VX521. This VCR is actually a recorder that allows you to record videotapes from VHS tapes onto DVDs. Uh, I really do like this, but I mainly use it to convert RF to component because I don't want to mod any of those older systems. Now, does it mess with it a little bit? Yeah, it does. Um, it will actually take an NES signal and make it incompatible with the light gun. So there is a little bit of video processing there that's causing some frame delay. But for video capture, uh, it makes it so much easier because I'll usually, I use this device to convert to component. That way I can get a very good, nice, clean signal and have little to no radio frequency interference when I'm capturing from, say, like the Atari 2600. <clears throat> now, the next device that I'm using is the RetroTINK 2X, um, or, well, I've used it in the past. I still have, I still have some of my RetroTINKs, not all of them though. So the RetroTINK 2X was a device that allows you to connect classic video game consoles, such as the NES, SNES, N64, to modern televisions. It's a video scaler that takes low resolution video signals from the console and upscales it to a higher resolution that is compatible with modern displays. It supports up to 1080p resolution output to HDMI. Uh, <clears throat> let's see, it also has a built-in de-interlacing noise reduction and improves the picture quality. It's definitely a good option for those who want to play classic games on a modern TV, but want to maintain the original picture quality as much as possible. It's also perfect for retro gaming enthusiasts who want to experience a classic game on the big screen. Guys, I love all of the RetroTINK products. Uh, I love how Mike Chi is just a good person. I, I, I can't put it any other way than that. He is such a good person and, and great for the community. So speaking of the RetroTINKs, I have a RetroTINK 5X. It is definitely a high performance video scaler. It, uh, it allows me to connect to, uh, you know, more classic consoles to the to the uh, modern televisions, such as the NES, uh, the SNES, and the N64. Um, it's very similar to the RetroTINK 2X, but it has a lot more advanced features. Uh, like the 2X, it takes low resolution video signals and upscales them to, to be compatible with modern displays. It also has a built-in FPGA that provides advanced uh, processing power to improve the picture quality, such as scan line uh, generation, deinterlacing, noise reduction. It also has a built-in video processor, video processor huh, that can handle multiple video inputs, and it can support a wide range of video modes and display refresh rates. It's definitely a good option for users who want to play their classic video games on a modern TV and want to maintain things like aspect ratio and uh, some of the original picture quality. Uh, this is what I'm currently using as my main setup. I still do have uh, my 2X Pro uh, for my Player 2 room um, so that I can hook up classic consoles to a uh, modern display in the player two room as well. But again, I cannot suggest uh, the RetroTINK line of products uh, enough. It is, they are just wonderful. And the fact that the 5X can be updated with new firmware makes it so much better. So we're going to move on to the last piece of the puzzle. Uh, this is the current video capture device that I'm using right now. It is something that I got very lucky and scored on eBay for 20 bucks. It is the Avermedia Live Gamer Portable C875. 
Now, I'm just going to call this the live gamer from now on, but I have to say this thing is good. It's compact. Uh, it functions off of USB, which is super weird that it works so well and it only uses a USB 2.0 connection. But the Gamer Portable is a portable video capture device that allows you to record and stream video footage from a variety of sources, including game consoles, cameras, and other devices. It can record video in, H, uh, in 1080p at 60 frames a second and supports H.264 hardware encoding. The device is small, lightweight, and makes it easy to, to travel with it. Um, let's see, as an, it has an HDMI input and output, as well as a built-in microphone and support for external audio input. It also comes with Avermedia's REC Central software, which allows you to adjust settings, schedule recordings, and stream live video to the internet. These are all pretty good things. Um, however, for the most part, I still use OBS. However, I'll get to a different software in a moment. This is definitely, the device is a good option for users who want to record and stream uh, their gameplay on the go. It's also a good choice for content creators who need to record footage from a variety of sources and stream it live to the internet. Now, I use this in conjunction with my RetroTINK 5X, and it works flawlessly for the most part. There is one console that is an absolute bear to handle when you have to try to go through and just deal with uh, video recording protection, and that's the PlayStation 3. So... The, the, PC, the, the PS3 has this nasty habit of not letting people record HDMI output. Now, I know you can go through and do the uh, component output and record it that way, but it's just not the highest quality signal that you can get out of the console. However, uh, there is an alternative version of the REC Central software that can bypass HDCP. I'm not going to tell you how to find, where to find it, how to find it. All I'm saying is it's out there, it exists, and that it works. Uh, it's not flawless, but I can record and stream PlayStation 3 with this additional software. And, uh, yeah, that's basically it, guys. I I ended up on the Avermedia Live Gamer Portable C875. It's been a champion for me for over two years now, and I absolutely love it. Uh, I stream from it I when I do stream, and I do all of my video recordings from it. And it's, it's really good. Um, I, I really love using it as my main capture device now in conjunction with the RetroTINK 5X. Uh, I do use a video downscaler so that I can still play uh, in 4K on my PlayStation 5 and my PlayStation 4 Pro and still get a, a uh, video input uh, into the capture device for uh, purposes that uh, suit the channel here. And um, yeah, I, I can't suggest it enough. Go out onto eBay and get one. It is definitely worth getting one of these devices. And that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month and I look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.